Hello, everybody, and welcome into your morning edition of Talking Trees Live. I am your host, Katie Dubow, and I'm so excited to be here today with you talking with some of our favorite Davy tree people from across the country. Today, we're going to learn about the healing benefits of trees. If you follow Davy on Facebook, you likely know about some of those benefits. But did you know that they're equally important to have in your backyard as they are on the healthcare campuses, the hospitals in our communities? So we're going to learn today from our guest, Frank. And Frank, I didn't even ask you about your last name. Monteleone, we'll hope when we bring him in, we'll see if I got it right or not. Um, and he led the crew at Cleveland Clinic when they did an overhaul of their campus. And we'll learn about what they did and why, why it was important. And we also have in Sandy Reed. She's vice president of corporate communications at Davey. And so let's welcome in our two guests and learn about the importance of trees on campuses. Hey, Frank. Good morning. Did I do it? Did I pronounce it right? Perfect. Monteleone. Just like Monteleone. You it's uh <laughs> all of the vowels are there for me yeah. to do it. I could I am glad I got it right. Hey Sandy. Hi Katie. Hi Frank. Hi. Good morning. <clears throat> so um we're really, really excited and we've got some people already tuning in saying good morning, having some coffee with us. Hey Lou, hey Sage. And Jill, good morning. So first, before we talk, introduce the two of you, we always like to ask people what the weather is like. Do you have fall leaves yet? I'm looking out at a beautiful maple and it is like that rainbow hue where it starts green, then it's yellow and it's red. Right now, the whole tree is that color. Let us know in the comments if you're seeing fall out your window um, with a little fall leaf emoji or what are you seeing out your window? Sun, rain, give us, give us a little emoji. What about you two? It's a beautiful morning here in Northeast Ohio. I don't think we have, we're just starting to have a little bit of color, um, but uh, it looks like a beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Sandy. It was a little dark earlier, but uh, definitely looking better today already. Beautiful fall day. We love it. This is the best season. And we are, um, I think, countdown, three weeks away from Halloween. So is anyone going to dress up as a tree out there? We want to know. Um, what your Halloween tree-related, plant-related Halloween, Halloween costumes are. Um, all right, well, let's jump in and introduce Frank and Sandy. Frank, you're the National Sales Manager for Davies Landscape Services. Tell us how you got into arbor culture and how you wound up at Davy. So uh, I'll go back a little bit in time. Um, my whole adult career life has been in the green industry, uh, primarily uh, the first let's call it three fourths of that uh, tenure has been in the landscape division. Um, but recently, I'm going to say the last 10 years transitioned more into, let's call it just the green space in general, and uh, including the uh, trees and the benefits of trees and the overall canopy, if you will. So just, uh, you know, it's the youngest part of my career at 10 years, uh, but uh, looking forward to, you know, winding out my career in that same, uh, if not more improved uh, green space, if you will. I love it. Yeah, and there, it's amazing how we are so lucky to do what we do and yeah. the the benefits, what we do is, has enormous benefits on people that, you know, putting trees, improving their landscapes. These are, we are lucky to have the job we have, aren't we? Absolutely. We oh. get to create things that people want. Yes. Right? That's the way I look at it. Yep. All right, Sandy. So speaking of costumes, I know that you were fam are famous, and I wish I had the picture. Maybe someone can post it in the comments. You were famously a tree in a school play. So you have a long story to career with trees. In fact, Davy was your first job out of college, right? That's correct, Katie. So yes, I first was a tree in the play, the, the environmental play, The Womp World, um, which was uh, part of the Kent School's uh, summer enrichment program. And then um, that actually took place right across the street from our offices here. So I think I was destined to work at Davy. and 35 years later, I can't say there's a better job in the world. So great to be able to work with all of our arborists across North America, hear their stories and, um, and promote canopy cover, um, which we all need more trees. Yes, we do. And so let's jump in. Let's use that as our um, opportunity to jump in and talk about what we're here to talk about, which is the, be the healing benefits of trees and especially why they're important for our healthcare campuses. Research shows that 
if you've read any of the research and we'll post some links, but patient interaction, particularly as you're healing with green space, gardens, parks, even looking at pictures of trees helps accelerate your healing, improves the human condition, improves your mood. So because of that, that tree canopy is so incredibly important on our healthcare campuses. So Frank, we're going to start with you um, and talk a little bit about the healing benefits of trees, because I know it makes such a difference in my day when I go out for a hike or I just spend time outside amongst the tree canopies, among, amongst my landscape. It really improves my mood. So what are some of the benefits of trees that um, we can talk to people about? Not just the healing, but just some of the benefits of trees. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you said it very well. There's no doubt about it. It's over-encompassing uh, overall better health just because of the green space. but. I've narrowed it down for for this application to really three major ones. And one, improved respiratory health. We know that trees in the environment help purify the, that, the air, mm -hmm. whether it's pollutants, carbons, uh, just overall uh, reducing the heat. Mm -hmm. These are all benefits to our respiratory health, first and foremost. I think that's the simplest one. Second one, improved mental health and, and just overall restorative properties of our body. Yeah. Mental health, like you said, you go on a hike, you feel good. I know you're excited, you're, you're, you want to be out there, but it's exhausting at the same time. But being in and amongst the trees, it just makes you feel that much better. So let's just call it improved mental health mm -hmm. and overall health. And then last, I'm going to say it creates... The body automatically, by being in a better place or uh, a better state of mind, just creates that better quality within ourselves. And and if if you would, it's it's creating our own medicine. It's creating those disease fighting cells that we don't have to go to the hospital or doctor to get a prescription. Our body is creating this naturally. And and you mentioned it. You take a hike. That's one thing, going out into nature and, and saying I've got a purpose to be there. But what about just taking a stroll through the neighborhood in the evening? We do it ourselves after dinner. You take a nice stroll, you're in and amongst the green space. Yeah, there's neighbors out and people are talking, but the canopy that lines just the neighborhood, yeah. just whether it's fragrant, whether it's just beauty, whether it's color, I mean, it's all just good stuff. And, and, and I want to... I want to say I can't hold back enough with the good part of that being a contributor to just good health. And, and that's that's why my passion's in that that arena, no doubt, no doubt. And I know when I see people walking in my neighborhood, it's, you know, it just improves community. Now you have yeah. more people walking in the neighborhood and enjoying it. And I know we could talk for 14 years about the mm -hmm. benefits of trees. So yeah. Sandy, anything you wanted to add about that? I think Frank covered that, but you know, I the, we've been so fortunate to have research from the U.S. Forest Service that uh, Davy's been able to collaborate uh, with uh, the Forest Service, and and over and over and over again, um, trees around hospitals, the healing is faster. Trees around schools, learning is accelerated. Um, trees in our communities, there's less crime. Um, there's just so many benefits of trees in addition to the beauty beauty benefits and um, so that that really was kind of what brought us to the collaboration with the um, Arbor Day Foundation on wanting to be involved in this tree campus um, health care program. Well so you just mentioned um, Arbor Day Foundation you mentioned cities and college campuses. So Arbor Day has a Tree City USA and Tree Campus program. And then since 2020, they have a Tree Campus healthcare program. So this is the Arbor Day Foundation. We'll post a link to it. So Sandy, tell us a little more about this program. Well, we've been fortunate to be involved with the National Arbor Day Foundation for years. And when they wanted to expand their Tree Campus program into healthcare, it, um, it, we were fortunate to be able to be part of that planning process. The Davy Company is involved with healthcare institutions all across North America, and so it was a natural thing that we wanted to to participate in, celebrating those tree campuses that are the best of class in um, in their in their managing their green space and, and involving the community in their campus. 
Um, so it's been great for us to be involved as a collaborator. We're the professional partner, since that's what our business is of this program. Arbor Day Foundation um, administers the program. And then the U.S. Forest Service practice healthcare, or practice green, um, um, their name, sorry, practice green health, and also the Professional Grounds Management Society are all partners in the program. Wonderful. It takes a, a whole village to put together something like this. So I saw someone tuning in, Lou Meyer, our friend from Maryland. There are hospitals that have been acknowledged. There are certainly some great ones in Ohio. We're going to talk with Frank about Cle the Cleveland Clinic. But in Maryland, the Perry Point Veterans Affair Medical Center. Um, and let us know wherever else you guys are tuning in from, because I know in 2020 they recognize, um, is it, well, they've total recognized, what, 24 hospitals now? Yes, yes. So, you know, anyone can nominate um, uh, a, a hospital um, or healthcare facility by going to the Arbor Day Foundation website um, and looking at Tree Campus Healthcare and making a nomination. Uh, certainly, a tree, uh, an organization can nominate itself as well. And uh, we've been fortunate here, based since we're based in Ohio, that there's a number of Ohio um, institutions that are uh, early recipients. Um, certainly, the Cleveland Clinic and also the Ohio State Medical Center. But there are winners um, that have been recognized all across the country uh, from uh, UAB Hospital in Alabama to uh, UK Healthcare in Can uh, Kentucky to um, Penn State Health um, Center in Hershey. Yep. Um, and we like to see that list continue uh, because uh, that means that uh, there's more green space all across uh, the, all the healthcare institutions. Yes. Um, and someone is tuning in from Florida. There is not yet one in Florida, but Amador, you can recommend if you know a hospital um, that is really investing in their tree care canopy, you can do that. So um, we urge you to recommend somebody. So let's jump into specifically the Cleveland Clinic and talk a little bit about their Tree Campus Healthcare Award. And Frank, congratulations. I know you led the work there and now you won an award. It's not every day you can win an award for your work. So that's pretty cool. So tell us a little bit about the, the efforts from start to finish about the planning and then what exactly the gardens look like there. Um, talk, talk us through that. Okay. So, like like you had mentioned, uh, it, it's not just one singular person. It takes a it takes a whole village, if you will, to put things like this together. And the team at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, state of the art, uh, they they've got it dialed in. They do a tremendous job, and they've taken it to another level um, since my not departure, but but uh, moving, uh, let's say, out and broadening my horizons just from Cleveland. Uh, especially in this healthcare vertical. But the, the main thing there is that the clinic was a great partner, uh, visionary partner uh, in wanting to not only promote the, the canopy within the city limits, but creating that healthy urban environment, if you will. And they know that in order to do that, they need to give back. So as like the Cleveland Clinic, as, as well as other healthcare campuses across the country, they continue to develop. And as they develop, they build buildings, they build parking garages and parking lots. So what happens? The green space gets diminished. Yeah. And in order to give back, they've created areas where they could then populate not just green space as far as turf and flowers and plantings, but make sure that they have the ability to have that tree canopy put back in place. And that's what we did at the Cleveland Clinic. Really, it was working together with a visionary of the Cleveland Clinic and saying, we want to build, we need to build because there is a need, but we also need to make sure that we keep this green infrastructure in place. Mm -hmm. And that's where we came in. We planted in and amongst the campus itself over 100 trees. Wow. And areas as big as two to 3,000 square foot of pollinator gardens, oh. plantings. I mean, not just tree canopy, but we're also inviting the, the pollination to continue, the uh, inner city, you know, with the limits and concrete and buildings all around. It, it takes away from that ability to keep pollinating insects around, butterflies. And 
by creating these areas, not only is it environmentally friendly and helps, it also attracts people, patients, and gives that, again, continued overall health, good health, if you will. Well, that's what I had a quote up um, from, is it John Utech? John Utech, yes. And it said that it's impacting the population that they serve. And mm -hmm. I read another quote online that said, everyone was surprised that it was not just the patients who were using these pathways and walkways and these, you know, ability to, to get out amongst the trees, but their employees, yep. the doctors and the nurses were really benefiting from it. And then the community would come by. And so it's just, there's so many people that it affects when a camp, a tree campus, health in uh, tree healthcare campus invests in their canopy. It really impacts not just, you know, we saw that, that quote before that research shows it's one day less of a hospital stay. Yes. Um, and so that's really wonderful. And it's amazing that you guys did so much work. How long did it take? I know it's an ongoing process and you still manage it, but what was like the start to finish timeline? So the timeline for the, the portion of the planting that happened on campus was about three years from start to finish because it was during and after construction. So that was the uh, camp within campus mm -hmm. uh, plantings. And you touched on something there because it's not just at the, the main campus at the, you know, in the city, there's suburb campuses. And you had talked about walking trails and, and other parts and parks. And I want to, I want to elaborate on that a little bit. So, the walking trail was um, a donation by a family and their thought was again continuing the stewardship on the benefits of green health they said there's a beautiful area in a suburb where the clinic has a hospital and why not include that beauty of nature rock formations mm. beautiful tree tree lined uh, wooded areas the ability to create natural paths in and amongst wow. a waterfall that is natural, not created. So that was a project that took about a year, but again, on a different campus, but the same benefits, the, the amount of traffic that happens on that, that trail, it's not just the folks at the hospital, whether it's patients or employees or, or, or caregivers, it's the community. And I don't mean just the immediate community. There's communities surrounding cities that utilize that trail as events that they host there, just natural walking areas wow. for people to go so they're not in and amongst the city. Yep. And I mean, we've got to maintain that because of the amount of traffic. So to me, it just shows that they're, the benefits are known by others as well. You mentioned parks. And I want to touch on that a little bit. In the city, in the Cleveland Clinic, um, they ran out of space to plant trees. And again, the forward thinking, when you plant trees, you have to be able to create the space for the canopy when it does grow. Right. So those areas become limited. So what the clinic did, they had another vision. In and amongst the community, why not create what's called pocket parks? These were areas where there was abandoned homes, mm. just disarray parking lots that were just an eyesore. Came in, we reclaimed the parking lots, they knocked down homes, we created green space with lawn, trees, big natural areas, planting beds that now folks can use from whether it's that street or that community. It's at the end of a street and they use it as a park. They set up, you can see all summer long, there's picnics, oh, that's there's so just cool. areas of hanging out, and just in general, a good place to hang out, right? And that to me, again, just continues to scream forward thinking and being good environment, you know, stewards to, to the environment. Yeah. That is a great idea too. And you think, of course, a hospital wants to create a healthy community, right? You think Absolutely. that that is the, the point. And I love your point about forward thinking because it's not just about creating a healthy hospital within the walls and mm -hmm. your patients, but knowing that it starts well before that and Absolutely. that you need to provide that healthy community so you don't have as many people in your hospital. 
So that is really forward thinking. So Sandy, tell us a little more about some of the work. Um, I know Davey does some other work. We have University of Texas pictures here. Tell us about why it's important that Davey was involved with this project from the start. Well, I, I think it's important because um, healthcare is healthcare's um, never been more important than it has been certainly to in the in the last um, year and a half as we've gone through the pandemic. And so, celebrating those those healthcare organizations and the people who work there was very very important. Uh, the the Tree Campus Healthcare Program, you know, I think some of the challenges we're facing nationally, you know, whether people are less active, only twenty three percent of adults get an, um, enough exercise on a regular basis. Mental health, you know, Sunday was National Mental Health Day. Mental health is at risk. You know, one in five adults have a mental health condition. Increased pollution, um, it threatens health. Air pollution causes one in nine premature deaths a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could go on and on and on statistically and all this information. And um, as Frank was mentioning, you know, these, these uh, healthcare organizations many times are in the cities. Many times there is not enough green space around those areas. Uh, you know, you have buildings and parking lots. And so they, the healthcare institutions that have been able to um, look at putting green space around their um, entities help help really in the healing process. And it's so important um, to be able to collaborate with communities. Like the example Frank gave of the pocket park in Cleveland, you know, it, you know it's one thing to build a, a, a green space. It's another thing to make sure that it's used and celebrated yeah. and maintained uh, because as we all know, Planting trees is part of the situation, uh, but caring for those trees and nurturing those trees with the plant health care, just like our human care, is what allows those parks to thrive. But you ask you know, other other places. I think a great example is University of Texas. Um, and so at University of Texas, Davy Resource Group, Davy's consulting arm, uh, was involved in a tree inventory uh, for University of Texas. And as part of their nomination, they cited the inventory, which gave them the information to use to figure out how to best manage their space and to also set goals to, uh, you know, to achieve um, some of the things that are in the program standards for, for the Tree Campus Healthcare Program. So there's, there's five standards that a entity goes through, you know, uh, having an advisory committee, uh, having a facility tree care plan, and the inventory was part of that. A community forestry project, the pocket park example was was that celebrating and educating. It's a key thing to be able to, you know, it's not just the, you don't walk through the green space to get to the parking lot. The green space is something that's part of your healing. Uh, Frank's example of the community park or our organizations that are doing the walk with a doc uh, program where you can actually walk and talk to your doctor uh, about, you know, what's concerning you. People are more relaxed when they're in green space, so they might be, you know, not as nervous, their blood pressure lower as they're talking about their condition. And then a financial investment, you know, so an investment in green space, it, it requires a commitment from these organizations. And now we want to make sure that that's celebrated uh, because that helps everyone. Well, I've never heard of the Walk with a Doc program. I, that is so cool because, I mean, I know a lot of people don't want to leave their homes or don't feel comfortable being in the hospital now, but what a neat idea. It's like walking meetings. I've heard about, um, I have a, 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 my brother-in-law works for a big company and they do walking meetings. They say, you know, be on their phone, but be outside and walk around during this meeting. He says not everyone does it, but the whole idea is there is that we know sitting or being inside, it can cause some anxiety. It's not the best for us to just sit around all day. And so um, it, again, it, it exemplifies that forward thinkingness of these hospitals and these healthcare practitioners to be able to say, you know what, health is not just about today. It's about looking forward at the patients and what's surrounding them and what, what makes them healthy every day and for the long haul. So that's awesome. So this is, these are pictures of Texas. Um, it looks like a beautiful campus. I didn't, I don't think anyone from Texas is tuning in, but maybe we'll tag this um, hospital and they'll, they'll share it because it really looks like a serene and so does the Cleveland Clinic. Looks like a serene place to be. And when we are in hospitals, we're often, even at, at, at visiting someone, your, your anxiety often is, is running a little high. And so that is a really neat thing that Davey's involved in and that these healthcare campuses are involved in. So Frank, let's talk a little bit. We talked about this a little bit when we saw that quote from, from John, but why is it important for hospitals to invest 
in their tree canopies. We've talked about that a little bit, but let's dive a little deeper into why it's important, what community means to them, um, to, not just to their patients, but you know, to that urban environment that you talked about, the pocket parks. Yeah, and I, I Sandy touched on a lot of great things, and you know, walk with a doc program was a. Uh, was the the slogan that we uh, they dubbed for the uh, the trail, mm. and and I think the the most important thing there is that whether it's the Cleveland Clinic or any other hospital that we do take care of, maintain and care for grounds, the the thought process is that the balance between the green space and the rest of the space, I'm gonna say. I know there's other names for it, but you know, it could be buildings, parking lots, whatever it may be. But there's gotta be a good balance. And the most important thing for me is that healthcare institutions recognize that as not just being a benefactor for, you know, let's, let's call it the PR. Mm -hmm. It's really a health improvement because let's, let's not, you know, uh, let's not discount the pandemic, right? When there is such a thing and there is no hospital space, we need people to be healthier. And by being healthier, yes, you think the, the hospitals are going to say, well, wait a minute, that's going to hurt our business. No, it's not the case. What they want to do is treat the people that need to be treated and hopefully have the green space and that over encompassing green canopy help all the other, let's call it easier or more natural uh, things that can be taken care of. And I was gonna focus a little bit on a couple other hospitals that I know that I was involved with certain things. And this is not limiting because we've got, we've got healthcare networks all across the nation that we work for. But I do wanna, I do wanna emphasize someone like the uh, Akron Children's Hospital mm -hmm. and it's in Northeast Ohio as well. But their vision was they're treating young, vulnerable patients, right? They're kids. Yeah. They're in an institution where they know they're sick. They want to get better. And what a better way than to show them the environment when they're in such a sterile area of the hospital, right? They're being treated for cancer or uh disease of some sort or uh, brain issues. And, and just for them to be able to look out and see a park where they could then feel better and knowing that, hey, in the park, I have a good time. I have fun. And even if it's just off in the distance, that helps the overall mental place that that child is. And to me, very near and dear to my own heart, and uh, I think that that just speaks thousands and millions of words mm -hmm. for the forward thinking of, of an institution like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to treat this kid and we want every kid to come out healthy. Yeah. And we know that's not always the case, but why not make it the most pleasing environment for them? Yeah. So that's an example. That's a great example. Speaking okay. of kids, Frank, I don't want to interrupt you, but there's a Samantha who's saying hi. So, Samantha, <laughs> my girl. <laughs> That's my own daughter, and she's in the healthcare world herself. And uh, she's well, gone through some health issues, and thank God folks like the Cleveland Clinic has, have helped her. Yeah, well, thank you for your work, Samantha, and for tuning in to see your dad. He's famous. <laughs> Um, I love that example because there are a lot of hospitals that haven't been recognized yet. It's a brand new program. Um, and so just because a hospital hasn't been recognized on this list doesn't mean there are. It's a really good point. Yeah. Lots of institutions out there that are doing really good work, that are forward thinking, that are seeing the benefits of this. And I can just picture having two little kids, the importance of kids being able to see themselves in the future, healthy, happy, like other kids around them who are playing in playgrounds. Like yes. visualize that and that power of being able to visualize themselves playing in that playground. I know, you know, research shows that power of that visualization improves their health. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we want to help more and more healthcare institutions across the country. And 
you know, I know Sandy's uh, an integral part uh, with, with the Arbor Day Foundation, and I've been blessed to be asked to, to support it and help, and I love it. I really do. I think it's a great, a, a, a great challenge for all of us. Um, it's a great partnership with Arbor Day, and again, it's just going to improve the overall health of not just individual communities, but the nation as a whole. I mean, yeah. and, and then outreach from there. Yeah. I, mean, I, I just, um, it's a great, great program, no doubt. Well, and, and because a lot of the people watching likely are consumers, people who have their own backyards, this translates to our backyards too. Absolutely. You know, just because the, the healthcare campus is doing it or your community park is doing it, it, it doesn't have to be over there. You can have this in your own backyard too and experience the healing benefit. All of it is to people's backyards too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'll touch on that, you know, with the pandemic, uh, we're not using that as our as our scapegoat here, but folks were working from home. Yeah, and we, not just in in our certain divisions, but most divisions got the questions posed to us. Hey, I'm working from home. I want a better environment to work. I don't want to just be in my own office in my own home. So we've created this past year. I don't even know how many outdoor spaces that our crews created. And that was the beginning of it, you know, whether it was a patio, an outdoor sitting area, an area where Wi-Fi could be accessed. So planting trees in the right fashion so that not only could they get the benefits of the shade, but it wouldn't block their, their ability to get Wi-Fi. It, all kinds of different things. But that's where we can help. I mean, uh, it's not just limited to big institutions or campuses. You're right. In your backyard continue to propagate and plant trees. It's great for the overall health, not just in the inner city. It goes for all of us, suburbs, backyards, front yards, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sandy, any last thoughts about healthcare campuses we missed? Well, I think, you know, going back to the program standards for the program, you know, one of the interesting things to me is, you know, you can't really help where you are. So sometimes a campus doesn't have space to create a pocket park um, or doesn't have space to have a park. But so what, what they can do is they can adopt the street trees or the adjacent area around um, the hospital, and that can be considered um, in their um, in their nomination. Um, so that so so, you know, it is, it is flexible in terms of how you can give back and you can help. You know, that, that community forestry project could be anything like uh, creating a park or, um, you know, a public amphitheater. Um, there's a great example, I think, in Georgia, Tanner Medical Center um, in Carrollton. Um, you know, it's a gravel uh, walkway with flowers, a, uh, benches. It's 1.5 miles of green forested space. You can escape, you know, the, the hustle and bustle of the city. Uh, there's a peaceful pond. You know, that hospital made a commitment um, to doing that, to share it with the, with the, with the neighboring community. So, you know, we often say trees are the answer and, you know, here's a great example of not only did it have the benefits for those who were, were at the medical institution, but it also had the benefits for the neighbors. And, um, you know, all, if we have more healthcare facilities that have more green space, then we'll have more healing and, um, and it just all the benefits that ta Frank talked about earlier will just be exponentially increased. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I really applaud all these organizations that have invested in their green space and are giving back to their communities. And, and that's what Davey likes to help with. That's great. And we Dana Karcher is tuning in and we had Dana on one of these chats. Hey, Dana. Um, and we talked about the importance of caring for your urban trees. And so I love that point that it doesn't have to be a huge acreage of park. Maybe you your hospital doesn't have that space or your home. You don't have that space. The urban trees are incredibly important just as important as our forests, we need all the trees. And I love that point that if your hospital or your location is not on this sprawling campus, you can still apply. You can still make a difference. Mm -hmm. Forget applying, you know, for now, you can still make a difference. So that yeah, is- so, Yeah, because yeah, you and Frank both talked about it, you know, in the pandemic, people weren't moving enough, you know? So one, one of the things that I think, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be five miles. It can be just, you know, start around the block. Uh, get up from the desk or get up from the chair and just move more. And, uh, you know, I think uh, 
trees, if you're out moving amongst the trees, then you'll increase the number of steps that you take. So whether whether it's a healthcare institution or a, a memorial park or a cemetery or a corporate facility um, or community park, library, school, um, you know, we should celebrate all those organizations that invest in their trees. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, Tracy's just tuning in saying that it's not healthcare related, but there is a public area near her community that did invest in a pocket park. And so how wonderful is that to have that to walk to get those steps? Not right now. Don't go anywhere. Um, but after this chat, get up and just walk around your yard, walk around the block, get those steps in because we're all guilty, you know, myself included of sitting too much. And so, you know, get if you're lucky to have a pocket park near you or create your own in your own backyard. So, um, and we got to say Lou's comment. Um, this is why arborists are such a happy group. They have good mental balance. <laughs> good one, Lou. The trees. Hey, Lou, it's good to see you this week. Yeah. So that wraps us up. Um, we, I think we talked so in depth and so well about this topic. We didn't have any questions. We answered everybody's questions. So good job, Frank and Sandy. Thank you for being here and talking about this healthcare campus program. We'll post another link to it. So if there is somewhere near you that you want to submit for an application, you can. There's also Tree City USA and um, college campus programs. So look, check them out and maybe nominate someone in your own backyard. So thank you so much, Sandy and Frank, for being here. This was a lot of fun today. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Always fun with you. Trees are the answer, everyone. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great walk. <laughs> um, and if you can't get enough of Talking Trees, don't forget that Davey has a podcast called Talking Trees, available on all podcast apps. And if you're interested in having an arborist out to your property, we'll post a link where you can find a local arborist to come out and create a little pocket park in your own backyard. So thanks so much, everybody. Happy walking in those trees. Bye-bye.